Good morning on this Monday morning and welcome to Washington National Cathedral. My name is Randy Hollerith, Dean of the Cathedral, and it's a pleasure to welcome you today to Holy Spirit Chapel here at the Cathedral, and thank you for joining us this morning. We begin our service with a prayer taken from St. Benedict's Prayer Book. Let us pray. Gracious God, help me today to realize that you will be speaking to me through the events of the day, through people, through things, and through creation. Give me ears, eyes, and heart to perceive you, however veiled your presence may be. Give me insight to see through the exterior of things into the interior truth. Give me your spirit of discernment, O Lord. You know how busy I must be this day. If I forget you, do not forget me. Amen. O God, who on Pentecost taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Today is the feast day of the visitation, and our lesson for this morning comes from the first chapter of the Gospel of Luke. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Today, we do indeed celebrate the Feast of the Visitation from Luke's Gospel, when a pregnant Mary goes and visits her cousin Elizabeth, who is also pregnant. Now, Elizabeth is further along in her pregnancy, and when Mary approaches, Elizabeth feels the baby leap in her womb, a baby who would grow up to become John the Baptist. It's a beautiful passage where these two women give God thanks and praise for the extraordinary lives that are growing within them. Whenever I read this passage, the one thing that I always marvel at is the courage of these two women. They have both been called by God to do some very difficult work. Elizabeth, son John the Baptist, will grow up and one day be beheaded. Mary, who was probably a teenager when she was pregnant with Jesus, will one day have to watch her son 
die on the cross. These two women have been asked by God to give birth to and to raise two very special people. They have been asked to trust God's plan for their lives and for the lives of their sons. Both of these women will face terrible suffering. But here we can see just a little bit of their hope and their courage. My friends, the truth is all of our lives, not just Elizabeth and Mary's, but all of our lives are in God's hands. All of our lives and the lives of our children and the lives of all the people we love. We are living in difficult times, and I know that there are many of us who worry all the time about the virus. We worry not only about our own health, but we worry about the health of those we love. We worry about our children and our parents and our grandparents, about all those who are dear to us. And we worry that they'll get ill or perhaps even die. And I know as well many of us worry about our jobs, about how we'll make a living during these difficult days, about how we'll be able to take care of our families. There is nothing I can say to you to remove your worry or that can take away your fear. But perhaps this morning we can learn a little something from Mary and from Elizabeth and the difficult challenges they had to face, the fear for their own children that they must have felt. They trusted in God's goodness and love throughout their lives, and we are asked to do the same. This trust in God didn't make their lives any easier, necessarily, and there is no promise that says faith will make our lives any easier. But we can know that no matter what happens, God holds us all in the palm of his hands, and he will never, ever let us go. Life may throw all kinds of trials and tribulations our way, but God will not forsake us. Perhaps this is one of the reasons that Mary's prayer, known as the Magnificat, which you heard this morning as part of our lesson, is such an integral part of the daily prayer life of the Episcopal Church that we have in our prayer book. Perhaps we need to be reminded that no matter what we are facing, God is with us. And even when we are facing an unknown future, we can say with the mother of our Lord, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Amen. Now would you join with me as we pray together the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. O God, our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble, we pray for all those affected by the coronavirus around the world, for the leaders of the nations, that they may work together for the common good. Give public health and government officials the strength and will to act with wisdom and compassion in service to all. Remove the presence of fear and anxiety from our hearts and heal those who are sick with the virus. Give skill, sympathy, and resilience to all who are caring for the sick and your wisdom to those searching for a cure. Strengthen them with your spirit that through their work many will be restored to health. All these things we pray in Christ's name. 
Amen. We close today with a prayer from Nadia Boltz Weber, and I hope that you will take the spirit of this prayer and add in your own special petitions. Let us pray. I do not know when we can gather together again in worship, Lord. So for now, I ask that when I sing along in my kitchen to each song on Stevie Wonder's songs in the key of life, that it be counted as praise. And that when I read the news and my heart tightens in my chest, may it be counted as a Kyrie. And then when my eyes brighten in a smile behind my mask as I thank the cashier, may be it counted as passing the peace. And when I water my plants and wash my dishes and take a shower, may it be counted as remembering my baptism. And that when the tears come and my shoulders shake and my breathing falters, may it be counted as prayer. And that when I stumble upon a Tabitha Brown video and hear her grace and love of you, may it be counted as hearing a homily. And that as I sit at the table in my apartment and eat one more homemade meal, slowly, joyfully, with nothing else demanding my time and attention, may it be counted as communion. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. May the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you and keep you and protect you this day and always. And I danced on the earth at Bethlehem, I had my birth. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance and lead, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance and lead. On the Sabbath, and I cured the lame. The holy people said it was a shame. They whipped and they stripped and they hung me.